good to see y'all. I got the light on me. <laughs> I tell people that the light that's on you is greater than the light that's in you. You'll burn up. We, want, we know who the light is. Amen. It's so good to see y'all this morning. It's so good to be here uh, with you. Uh, I was hoping I can see now through this screen over here if I need to see some scriptures. Boy, it's just great to be in Purpose Church. Purpose. I love the name of this church. I have told Chad that. Purpose. Uh, the intent or desired result of a thing that originates in the mind of the Creator. See, you are in the mind of the Creator. We know our destiny and we know our purpose. Our destiny is to be what? Transformed into the image of Christ. But our purpose is to manifest Christ. Oh, it's just so good to see you. Love Chad, love Angel, love the family, love the Dinkles. Uh, love to be with them. Uh, I try to forget all the things Chad did at Christian Life. When I, <laughs> when I was the principal, I look out there and I see uh, Candace and Mitch, my uh, son and... Uh, my daughter, uh, now don't get confused, my son didn't marry my daughter, but I told him I don't want son-in-laws, I want sons. And then I see Roman, my main man right there, he calls me son. <laughs> what you doing, son? <laughs> I love them so much. It's so good to be here today, and I know time is of essence, and uh, we want to get right into uh, the message today. And I'm going to speak from my heart today. Um, and... Uh, I, you know, I, I say series are good, uh, but a message is better. Uh, Malachi means messenger with a message. And I pray today that we will be a messenger with a message. I just want you to know that you are uh, God's greatest asset. I want you to know that. God loves you today. And God loves you so much he won't leave you the same. You'll leave out of here changed by the power of God, not by Wayne. I don't want you to have an encounter with me. If you have an encounter with me, you'll leave with nothing. But boy, if you have an encounter with the Spirit of God, we need an encounter with the Spirit of God. Amen? Because if you have an encounter with the Spirit of God in the Spirit, there's life. No man comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws him. Without the Spirit of God, there would be no fruit, for it is the fruit of the Spirit. Without the Spirit of God, there would be no gifts. It's the gifts of the Spirit. It's all about the Spirit, the pneuma, the breath of God. Well, I want the breath of God to breathe on us today. Amen? Not only do we want to have an encounter with the Spirit of God, we want to have an encounter with the Word of God. Not my words. My words will pass away, but God's Word will not pass away. Truth will set you free, but grace will keep you free. Amen? An encounter with the Word. You know, I thought about that. When you have an encounter with the Word, there's no faith without the Word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word. There's no healing without the Word. He sent forth this Word and healed them. How I many of you know there's a lot of hurting people in this world? Two types of people. Those that are hurting and hurting more. Those that are broken and broken more. And we need a lot of healing. But isn't it great to know that Christ, when he picked up the book, the first thing he said, I've come to heal the brokenhearted. Come to set at liberty those that are captive. I want to give you beauty for ashes, the all of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I'm just so glad we can have an encounter with God. I want you to say this with me today, is good ground. You know, you know why you want to be good ground? Because when the seed goes, goes forth, it says those that hear and understand are good ground. Because how many of you know the devil has come to steal and kill and destroy? Now, I'm going to give you a little revelation on that. So many times we think the devil's come to steal and kill and destroy us and our family and our children and our life. He is. But let me tell you what he's really come to destroy and steal and kill. That's the seed. 
You know why? Jesus is the seed. The seed is the source of life. The seed is the essence of life. There would be no life without the seed. What if the farmer ate all the seeds? There's no consistency without the seed. See, that, that's why Jesus, you know, but let me tell you one thing else about the seed. The seed's got to, you got to die. If the seed falls in the ground, it doesn't die. It won't produce. You see? And we want that seed today to be the essence of life. And I want you to know that the word truth is the essence of life. In fact, it even tells us that, that Jesus is the seed. It's the most consistent thing. How many of you know, why are we inconsistent today? How many of you know we're up one day, down the next, we're in one day. One day we tell our wife we love you, the next day we tell you just like your mama, I'm sorry. <laughs> got to be careful, I got to be careful, I'm old. <laughs> but I want you to know, if you don't see consistency in your life, listen to me, y'all, it's because you have too many seeds. We all know the word seed in the Greek means sperma. We understand that. But you know what it means in the Hebrew? Zera. You know what the word zera is? Singular. There are 16 scriptures in the, in the Bible about seeds. Seed is never used plural but one time. And I believe that's in Galatians 3.16. There are many seeds, but there's one seed. The seed, Christ Jesus. When God gave me that revelation, I cried. You know why I cried? Because I saw things in my life I didn't like. And you know, things don't just show up. There's got to be a seed there. And Jesus said, you are the temple of God. All you need is one seed, the seed, Jesus. And there will be consistency. I put a seed in you. Boy, that's just, that's what God's all about. But today I'm not going to speak on that. That's truth. That's seed. Let me tell you what I want to speak on today. I want to speak on relationships. Say relationship. relationship. The beginning of life. Say the beginning. the beginning. And then a little bit later on I'm going to show you there's an essential element to relationship. So many times we think it's just relationship. But how many of you know it's not just relationship? Huh? But it's fellowship. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit later on about fellowship is the essence of the relationship. Just like the seed is the essence of life, we're going to find out that relationship is the beginning. We want that relationship. I believe the first scripture I believe they put up there is that, I, I believe it's Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. And that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, oh, the Father of glory, you know, glory Oh, Lord. Glory is the, the love and life of Jesus that's manifested through you. That's the glory of God. Praise is giving glory to God. Glory is manifesting God. But he said it's for the glory of God. The Father is given of glory. May give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Boy, we need revelation, right? But we need a revelation of him and who he is and a revelation of the cross. And what does it say? Give us a revelation in the knowledge of him. Let me tell you, listen to me. I'm old. I'm your friend. When it comes to the end of life, the only thing you need to know is that do you know him and does he know you? Saddest scripture in the Bible, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I know what? I know you not. He wants to know us today. And how does he want us to know us? In revelation. Knowing in him that the eyes of our understanding. Remember I said about good ground. Good ground is those that hear and understand. You want to hear. You want to understand. If we don't hear and we don't understand, the seed will fall by the wayside. And the devil will come in and remove it. And it won't benefit us. The seed is there to benefit us. Jesus, the seed, is there to benefit us. And understanding, it means this. It means that I comprehend it. I've got it. I want you to understand today what I'm speaking about. If you leave out of here today and say, I didn't understand. If we don't have understanding, see, the highest level of learning is doing. 
And you can't do what you haven't comprehended. You can't do what you haven't learned. So we want to be good ground so we can hear and understand and we can learn. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it says this though. The God of this world has blinded the minds. How many of you know the God of this world has blinded the minds of so many people? Blindness is the the final state of man before destruction. It's so, the world is groping around blind. Blindness is not just the inability to see, but you can't hear, you can't feel. It's it's the inability that you can't, you can't, you can't, Even comprehend the things that you need to. And the devil wants to blind us. And that's why in this day and time we call bitter sweet and sweet bitter and light darkness and darkness light. Because we cannot comprehend what we need to know. But in 1 Peter 1.23 it says being born again. (laughs) Not of the corruptible seed but the incorruptible seed that liveth forever. And that's the thing that we need to know. That you're, when you're born again, when you're born of the Spirit, when, that's why we're born into sin. That's why we need to be born again. <laughs> and we need to be born from above. And we need to be in relationship with Christ. And when we're born again, and we're born of this incorruptible seed, then we become in relationship with with Christ. And we have not in Romans 8:15 it says we have not received what? The spirit of fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the father's house and not a courthouse. I'm glad to be in the father's house just a minute. We're singing that song, he is your father and he is your friend. God is a great father. I'm going to tell you about that in just a minute. But not only is he a great father, he's a great friend. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I've got a definition I'm going to give you of a friend though, okay? You remember when they tore the roof off the house and dropped the man down? And Jesus said, I've never seen so great a faith. When he said that, he said, thy sins be forgiven first. And then they all got mad. They said, how can he forgive sin? And then he said, take up thy bed. He said, what's easier for me to say? Thy sins be forgiven or take up thy bed and walk. And after he forgave the man, then he healed him. But all the men that brought him, see, Jesus knew something about that man that they didn't know. Let me tell you what a friend is. Listen to this. A friend is one that will love you when they find out what God already knows about you. I told a man the other day, aren't you glad God doesn't tell everybody what he knows about you? But a friend is one that's going to love you. He's going to be there. I, I thought about those guys that carried him. They probably wouldn't have carried him if they knew he had sin. But we have a great father <laughs> who became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. Let me tell you a little bit about this relationship. Say, Relationship is the beginning. And what I want you to know about that is this, is that relationship is established three ways. Number one, by the blood. By blood, that's kinship. That's our father, that's our mother, our brothers, our sisters, our aunts, our uncles. All of them are kin by relationship. And if you're fortunate like me, not only do you have grandchildren, like Roman and Sierra and Isabella and McCall and Dylan. Did I leave anybody out? I, I don't want to leave them out. They'll be mad at me. But then kinship is a great grandbaby. <laughs> now we got Harlow. And little McCall sends us pictures every night showing us little Harlow. And we just smile and we laugh and look at her. Because relationships by blood... We're not redeemed with what? Silver and gold, but the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Look, I'm here to tell you today, don't never take for granted the blood of Jesus Christ. His blood is what redeems us. Redeem means he purchased us. 
We're not redeemed with what? Silver and gold. I don't know how much money you got, but you can't buy redemption. You can't buy it with silver and gold, a vain conversation, all the tradition of man. But you're redeemed by the precious, say precious, blood of Jesus Christ. I'm just going to tell you a little story that I found in the Bible the other day. I've read it many times, but it never hit me like Deuteronomy chapter 22. When a girl was going to get married, the father would give the daughter a token for the wedding. And do do any of you know what the token was? He gave her a sheet. And she took that sheet on her wedding night made the bed up with that sheet and they consummated the wedding there that night. And afterwards she would take that sheet, she'd fold it up and when the honeymoon was over she'd go back home to her father and she'd give that token that he gave her to her father. And then it says in Deuteronomy 22, a little bit later on, if someone would make accusation against her that she was not what she was supposed to be, listen to this, y'all. The father would go get the sheet and lay it out. (laughs) And then that person would be humiliated and he wouldn't even have to pay a dowry to her. But if she was not what she should have been back then under the law, it's sad they would have stoned her. But the thing that I want you to say and I want you to get, as the devil laid out that sheet and it showed the blood of the consummation of the wedding, but what I want you to know, the blood of a virgin only proves she's a virgin. (laughs) But it's the blood of Jesus Christ. But what does Jesus do when the world and Satan makes accusation of our past failures and our past, our pain and our sorrow and our blunders and our mistakes and our giving in? Our Father goes and gets His sheet and He lays it down. He holds it up and His sheet is the cross. And He says, you are washed. You are pure. I don't care what accusation is made against you. The blood of bulls and goats could only remove sin, but my blood washes it away forever. We got a great father today. Don't ever underestimate the blood. The blood washes you. The blood gives you freedom. And Revelation 12, 11 tells us we're overcomers <laughs> by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And we love not life even unto death. Not only do you become in relationship by blood, but you come in relationship by marriage. By marriage. When Jesus made every, when God made everything, he said that it was not good that man would be alone. He said, I'll make him a helpmeet. One that will give him aid. One that will give him assistance. A good architect always makes a rough draft before he makes a finished product. And he said, I'm going to make somebody. The man was lonely, depressed. He couldn't procreate. He couldn't do the things, replenish what God wanted him to do without that Help me that God would give him. But relationship is established in marriage. I just want you to know God's way is a man, one man, one woman for life. To leave and to cleave, not to cleave and leave. To become one flesh, not one body. And to be the very image of God. So we can come in relationship by blood. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ that helps us be in relationship spiritually and also physically. But also the blood of Jesus Christ, not only then by marriage, but we also can come into relationship by adoption. And I want you to know today that, oh, I wish we would use that word more, adoption. Because... Adoption, if you are adopted, we're all adopted. For we not receive the spirit of fear, but the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. He is our Father. And an adoption, you have the same rights, privilege, and responsibilities, and heirs if, if you were a bloodline. That's what's so good about God. So in relationship, it comes by blood, marriage, and adoption. Relationship is kinship. Relationship is consistent. Relationship is the status. It's when the seed comes, it's a new DNA. I don't know about you, but we all have a different DNA. 
But when the seed of Jesus comes into our life, we get a new DNA, and it's the divine nature and the attitude of God. The problem today is huh, we need to keep the sin nature dormant and the divine nature dominant. But you still have a sin nature. None of us have arrived yet. We're still fighting this battle every day. Still trying to die every day. Relationship is a covenant. Relationship say front door. Say front door. It's the front door. God wants us to establish relationship. Uh, it's an inheritance. Let me tell you what relationship is not. It is not religion, thank God. Religion will have a bunch of Pharisees <laughs> that monitor the sins of others and forget about their own sin. Relationship points a finger. <laughs> Christianity and relationship, it extends a hand. Rel religion is critical. Uh, I used to have a sign in my office when I was the principal at Christian Life. It's easy to be critical when you're not in charge. Everybody can tell you what you should do. When you got the weight on your shoulder, it's a different story. It is, it is not your security. You're secure. Nobody can take that relationship away from you. But it's not your eternal security. And I'm going to show you why in just a second when we talk about fellowship. Say relationship. relationship. The, beginning. the beginning. Fellowship. fellowship. The, essence the essence and the quality of life. You see, essence means the main ingredient. I mean, you got to have flour and butter and oil to make some biscuits. We got to have air to breathe, it's essential. We got to have blood to flow through our body. I know I had to have open heart surgery, and I had to have three bypasses. And you know what God gave me after that? Wayne, don't never stop the blood from flowing to somebody. Don't never stop my blood because in my blood there is life. Let me tell you a little bit about fellowship. Continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking bread. Fellowship is communion. Fellowship is communication. Fellowship is taking part. Fellowship is giving, not taking. Fellowship is the quality of life. Fellowship is the main ingredient. Fellowship determines the condition of the relationship. It's not just relationship. It's not just the day we're born again. It's not just the day we get married. But we got to stay in fellowship. And let me tell you this. Fellowship is usually inconsistent on our part. You know why it's inconsistent on our part? We're not willing to die every day. We got to die. I tell people every day we need to die. Be a dead man. You can't hurt a dead man. You can't hurt a dead man. So number one is that we can have relationship by blood, by marriage or adoption, but God wants us to have fellowship, the essence of the relationship. And I want you to see this so that you understand it, that we have fellowship by adoption, but also fellowship is the quality and the finish of our life, but I want to show you how you can lose your fellowship, okay? You can't lose your relationship. You can't unborn somebody. Some people we'd like to unborn, right? <laughs> but you can't unborn. He's a son. He's a son. I'm going to show you that in just a second. But let me just tell you this. Fellowship can be lost. You can lose your fellowship. You can, how many of you know you can be in relationship and not be in fellowship? Okay? And that's the thing I want you to get today. Relationship is part, but fellowship is the essence of the relationship. And I've got to hurry, so I, I want to make sure I give you this. The, the fellowship is lost. All you've got to do is look at the story in Luke chapter 15. All of you know the story. I'm not going to go into the lost sheep and the lost coin, but you know the story of the two brothers that were lost. It wasn't just one brother that was lost. See, the sad thing, one was lost and knew it. The other one was lost in the house and didn't know it. The worst place to be is to be lost in the house and not know it. But let me tell you about this. The, number one, the way you lose fellowship, you become selfish. 
I, I, the scriptures up there, it'll show you what he did when he became selfish. And the younger said to my father, give me. Selfishness is all about I, me, and my. There's one letter in the middle of sin, I. One letter in the middle of pride, I. It's all about me. He became selfish. I'm not worried about my father. I'm not worried about uh, my brothers and whatever. It's all about me. He becomes selfish. And then after he becomes selfish, then what does he do? He separates. Selfishness will lead to separation. Separation will divide. What did God say about the house? He didn't want a divided house. It shall not stand. And let me tell you this. It said if Satan's house would be divided, it would not stand. Satan knows the importance of unity. So first of all, there's selfishness. Then there's separation. He takes his journey into a foreign country. And then he spends all of his money. And then, watch this, y'all. Selfishness leads to separation. But separation, if you don't watch it, it'll lead to sin. Sin is the number one problem in the world. It's the number one problem where? In the church. We, we like to talk about the sins of the world, but we don't like to talk about our sins. Don't, just forgive me. I'm old. I'm your friend. I don't see anybody with wings here today. I don't see a halo. Didn't see anybody flying here. God's Word says none of us are righteous. If you think you're holy, the light that's on you, you just need more light. If you think you're holy, you just haven't had enough light shine on you. None righteous. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the sad thing today is, you know what man's view of sin is? When somebody does wrong, we attach wrong to that individual and then we identify them by what they did wrong. But God's view of sin he attaches wrong to himself and he always identifies you as a son. But he doesn't want you to be a son out of fellowship. He doesn't want you to be a son that ends up in the hog pen. Because the worst place to be is to be in the hog pen and not know what's in the father's house. But the greatest place to be is no matter where you're at, you know what's in the father's house. Let me tell you, we have, like he said, he's the father. I want you to know we have a great father today. He was disgraced that we could find grace. We have a father that's always looking. We have a father that will forgive you. And when the elder brother don't want to celebrate, and he's lost and don't know it, and he's living in the house, and he says 99 is good enough. 99 is not good enough in the father's house. He's always looking for that one because you are so valuable to him. You are so valuable to him. And the point that I want to make to you today, the father, he, as I said, he wants us in relationship. He wants us to be a father. And he wants us to be a son. But he doesn't want us living out of the house. He wants us living in the house. And what did the, let me tell you this. You, you get in relationship by blood, marriage, adoption. You get out of relationship and, and out of fellowship, out, not out of relationship. You get out of fellowship when there's selfishness, separation, and sin. The more, you, listen to this, the more selfish you become, the more you separate from God and each other. And the more you separate, the more opportunity you have to sin. But I want you to know that God is always looking for you. And there's three ways to get in relationship. There's three ways to get out of fellowship. But there's three ways to come back to the Father. And number one, you acknowledge that son. What did he say? He said, here I am perishing in this hog pen. And my father has more to spare. But what did he say? I'm not. He, first of all, he acknowledged. Listen to me, y'all. Hey, there's nothing wrong. Acknowledge doesn't mean you don't have faith. I mean, if you're hurting, you're hurting. If you're broken, you're broken. If you sin, what if we didn't acknowledge sin? You acknowledge. He acknowledged where he was. And then after he acknowledged, I call that the A. A, B, C. 
The A, he acknowledged where he was. The B, he got revelation where he needed to be. He said, I'm going back to my father. And I'm going to then C, that's repent. That's change. He said, I'm not worthy. But listen to me, y'all. I don't know much, but I know this. Worthiness is not determined by (laughs) us. Worthiness is determined by the father. He doesn't want you living out of the house. He wants you living in the house. He wants you in relationship. But he wants you in fellowship. Say relationship. Relationship. The beginning. beginning. Say fellowship. Fellowship. The essence of the relationship. relationship. Are you getting this? Do you understand it? We got to have fellowship to keep the relationship. Both of them are so, so important. I just want you to know in closing, remember what I said. Remember what I said, the worst place to be in the hog pen. Well, let me tell you, I've never seen a hog pen turn a son into a hog. He may smell like one. He may wallow like one. But he's still a son. He's still a son. That's the way our father, but listen to me. Listen to this old man here. I'll be 79 in a couple of weeks, a month. I'm old. I'm old, bold, and cold. But God just doesn't want to be in relationship with you. He doesn't want you just to call Him Father, but He wants to have communion with you. He wants to talk to you. He loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. Fellowship is the essence of the relationship that will keep the relationship complete. You today, I hope you're in relationship with the Father. Nobody can take that away from you. That's your security. You're in relationship. But listen to me. Don't depend just on the relationship because the Father was in relationship with both sons, but He saw the youngest son lost And what? Dead. When he was what? Out of fellowship. The Father's heart today, we're in relationship. But I want to be in fellowship with you. I don't want to see you lost. I don't want to see you dead. I want to rejoice. I want you to come back home. Father, today I love you. I thank you for these precious people. Holy Spirit, I pray that there will be divine illumination. That they will understand. God... Holy Spirit, you got to do the work. Lord, I gave them information, but information is no good without transformation. Oh, God, let us understand how you want to be in relationship. You want to be our Father, but you want us to be in fellowship so that relationship stays complete. He doesn't want us out of the house. He wants us in the house because He loves us as a son. Today, I don't know. Is there anybody in this church today that's not in relationship with God? Come to realization where you're at. You say, Brother Wayne, I've got too much past, too much pain, too much things I'm ashamed of. Shame may remind you, but it doesn't define you. He says, I can handle all your past, I can handle all your dirt. My mercy covers dirt. Don't never stop mercy from touching dirt. If you're not in relationship with the day and you want to be in relationship, nobody's looking. Would you just raise your hand? God sees it. He says, I want to be in relationship with you. I want you to be my son. Yes, yes, yes. Relationship. God, let them be born again today of spirit. Yes, yes. I want to be in relationship with you. Some of you may be in relationship, but you're out of fellowship. You left his presence. You're still a son. He still loves you. But today, Lord, I want to renew that fellowship. I want to come back and have communion with you. You didn't, I don't want you to, you didn't waste that blood on me, Lord. It was for me. I want to have fellowship. Today, God wants you to leave. Would you stand with me right now? Everybody stand. 
Would you just say this, dear Jesus? Thank you for being a great father and a great friend. Forgive me when I have not been the son or the daughter that you want me to be. But today, (laughs) I'm going to have communion with you. (laughs) Breaking that bread and taking forth that blood, that cup of the new covenant because you love me with an everlasting love. I'm going to leave today with relationship, but I'm going to leave also with fellowship. (laughs) I'm going to keep that fellowship, Lord. I'm going to keep that fellowship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen.